hey what's up guys and welcome back to anime king and today i'm going to be giving you part three of what if naruto was personally trained by kurama after leaving the village remember to get this one to 100 like as usual share this to all of your friends in your social media platform and also stay in tune for the new episodes coming over on anime king 2 and anime king 3 guys which I hope you guys enjoy each and every one of them. And remember, if you're new and this is the first time hearing my voice, go ahead and click that red subscribe button and join Anime King, Anime King 2, and Anime King 3. All links will be in the description for you guys to enjoy. So yeah, without further ado, what do you say begin this new episode? Start the intro. So, the last spot we left off, as Naruto was currently being held captive by a couple bandits, he remembered what he did to the tree, when he had too much chakra, so he did the same thing, but he wasn't expecting the result to happen to the bandit, as the man body was sent blasting away and he slammed right into a tree, but the tree vine was set in a pointing manner, so he ripped right through it. The boss of the group got angry as he attacked Naruto ready to kill him for what he did but suddenly he was taken down by paper shurikens that confused Naruto as the other one pulled out his katana but someone didn't appear the man had to run in fear when he saw the person made out of paper but she didn't waste any time as she took him down as well as Naruto didn't know who this person was but he introduced himself thanking her for saving him as she told him that her name was Conan so with that she lead him as he followed behind her he didn't know where he was going or why he was following her but she saved him, so he just followed behind her. They went to an inn in the next town. In that inn, Naruto saw a man, his hair was shining in his eyes, right here. As Naruto was confused who this was, or what was going on, he then saw another red head on the bed. As the woman known as Conan called the man Nagato, as she asked him about the other girl. Nagato told her that it was another, orphan. As he then turned towards Naruto and told him to take care of this girl no matter what. Naruto was confused by what the hell was going on. Conan then placed two flowers on their hand after the girl woke up. As she used her paper and it embedded into their skin, confusing the both of them. When they looked back up, Conan was gone. As Naruto now had the responsibility of taking care of this girl, which he found that her mouth was quite, well, rude. Her name was Tiawaya, so with that they headed off after a bit of convincing and Naruto waiting for her. As she was rather, well, stuck in her ways as she didn't want to share a blanket with Naruto or cuddle up next to him because of body heat but eventually she had to as she couldn't get any sleep and it was so cold as she saw him training she took to the art as well but Naruto didn't know much about Genjutsu because she seemed rather interested in that but she was strong and fast as the both of them continued their training as from no one it seems that they're well living together well they're on the road as he told her he's going to the hidden sand and she just followed him after all, Nakato told him to take care of her. They made their way to a nearby town, as there was no one there at all. Going into a shop, even though they couldn't afford the clothing, the man told them that everything was half price, and they could just buy it and leave. Confused, they made their way. It was then that two men attacked them, as a Lord Brizzly man knocked away Naruto and grabbed Tewaya. They were talking about Conan as well, but Naruto didn't understand what they were going on about. The smaller man remained and started to beat the absolute crap out of Naruto. As Naruto got angry as he told the Kaibi to give him the power. She told him that it would be dangerous but it seemed that there was no other option. It was then that Naruto ripped into the man's skin. As claws came on his hand, the man stepped back in fear as Naruto looked up he saw blood red eyes and a malicious feeling and that strange cloak surrounding the kid's body. He got scared. So yeah guys, so it was basically as well I thought you guys can switch across to the place and check out for yourself. So what do you say in this new episode? Mashodo, a grown man. Scared of a seven year old. If anyone else saw the sight, they would have, well, laughed. But Mishodo had a reason to be terrified of the boy. As Naruto rose a bit off the ground, 
he didn't get to his feet as he was on his two hands. He was like a animal. As Nurka started to snarl, as Michodo saw those long pointed fangs and the hunger in the boy's eyes, show Michodo that the boy desperately won't use them on him as he knew that he couldn't waste time here. If he didn't do something now, he was afraid that this would go very very bad. As he taught Skunai's, he smirked as every one of them pierced into the boy. Eight Kunai slammed into him, pushing him back into the tree. Blood poured from his wounds. But Naruto didn't even look phased as he pulled out the Kunai's one by one. But Shodo watched with a shocked look on his face as all the wounds healed rapidly, releasing a small red hiss. What are you? the man said. Naruto simply growled as he charged forward at blinding speed. Mishodo never expected this kind of speed and he was also slightly frightened with fear. As Nurka slashed, Mishodo cried out in pain as four jagged scratch ripped into his stomach as he was sent sailing as he smashed into a tree. He grimaced and he clutched at the wound as blood was pouring. As Naruto stomped towards him, not even running, Mishodo tried to reach towards some kunai in his pouch but his hand couldn't pull the zipper. As it was coated in blood, it must keep on slipping off, and also his hand was shaking in fear, as it looked like the god of death, the Shinigami, was coming for him. But Naruto reached him and grabbed him by the jacket. Where's Teowaya? The voice was truly demonic. It only added to his frightening features. This was someone you didn't lie to. The eyes told him that much. The, the river. There's a spot at the river we meet when we get split up. Next to the waterfall, you can't miss it. The words gushed out. It was like Naruto's eyes were ripping the information out of him. Mishodo was still trying to wrap his head around the fact that a seven-year-old boy was lifting him with one arm. Satisfying what he got, Naruto clenched his fist further on the jacket as he turned and tossed the man over the clearing. He broke right through a tree and slammed into another one as he fell unconscious. As Naruto turned his eyes towards where the river was, he moved like a wild animal, tearing through trees that he didn't bother want to go around. As he just ripped them out of the ground, throwing them to the side, bursting through barks and leaping. As he moved from branch to branch, crashing through thick trunks like they were just a part of the ear. The aura of the Kayubi flew around him as he ran. As he could smell her, he could smell Tewaya now. He had been around her long enough that her scent was practically ingrained in his memory. He could practically trace a hint of it from a mile away. As the trees then came to an end as he leaped. He crashed landed on a large stone as he looked down to see a waterfall. His eyes flicked around the clearing as he saw her. The man had his back turned, the rather large man that kidnapped her, as he was looking into the tree line. The man then turned as he expected that to be some kind of wild animal as he heard the growling. Huh? He stepped back. That, that was a kid. Hey, it, it's you. As he saw the cloak around Naruto. As Teiwaya. Couldn't see what was going on, she was facing the opposite direction as the man was still holding on to her as she was struggling to get loose. Keijo looked at the boy. Where, where's Mishodo? He said. As Naruto didn't look at the man as he looked at the red-headed bundle under his arm. What did you do with him? The man said. Teiwai was riding around the man's grip like a snake as she wanted to see what was going on. Hey, let me see what's going on, you bastard. Keijo slammed his sword, the hilt of it, into her stomach. As there was a small whimper before she went quiet. Seeming me to fall unconscious. Naruto's eyes widened as he roared. A massive wall of just force slammed into Keijo as he had to hold his own instead of being blown away. You hurt her. Keijo's eyes widened as he heard the sheer malice and fury in the boy's eyes. He had worked out by now that his partner was either unconscious or dead somewhere. Both of those scenarios scared him after all. Mishodo was a better fighter. So, he didn't see how he was going to come out of this unscathed if this kid was able to take down Mishodo. Look kid, it's alright, I'll, I'll give you the girl back. I think carefully, sit to your way down. And I'll just walk away. Nobody has to get hurt. As Naruto took a step forward as Keijo took one back, it was then that Tewa rolled over as she coughed. A small trickle of blood coming from her mouth. As Naruto saw the bruises on her face, from where Keijo had hit her every time she cursed while walking to the river, Naruto had tilted to the side. He hurt her. His voice boomed through the area. You will get no mercy from me. Keijuro was no downright scared. His plan had failed and no looked like he was going to die for sure. He saw no other choice as he placed a foot on Tewa's stomach and pulled his blade and placed it towards her neck. Stay there or I'll kill her. 
As Nero to lower himself to all four limbs. Hey, I said don't move. What are you doing? As Kidro heard the boy growling, he should have been more focused on surrounding because one moment Naruto was there, crouched down. The next moment he was right beside him. In a moment of panic, he brought his sword around, forgetting about a wire. As Naruto caught it right in his palm, or the wound was healing itself, as Naruto ripped the weapon away from him and snapped the blade into two pieces as he tossed it away. Kijo looked on in shock. As Naruto grabbed him and tossed him, he slammed right into the river. He didn't stop there though, as Naruto shot forward, running on top of the river, the water steaming wherever his foot made contact. He grabbed Kijo's hand. Kijo screamed as the chakra burned his skin. As Naruto grabbed the man by his throat and moved forward and lifted him, he raised the man right over the waterfall that seemed to go gone down for miles. Please, don't do this. I, I'm sorry. The man was actually crying now. If it was from the pain in his neck that was burning away his skin because of Chuck Cloak or from the drop, I said, no mercy. But Naruto did not drop him as his hands started to shake. He was under the influence of the Kayubi but Naruto was still Naruto, a seven year old kid that has never killed anyone before on purpose and he didn't want to kill this man despite him being a disgusting wreck of a man. As he growled right in the man's face, the man crapped and wet himself instantly, shaking in tears as he was screaming out in pain. As Naruto turned and tossed him, he slammed his head right into the stone wall as he fell down unconscious. Slowly making his step back over to where Tewa was, Naruto made his way as he started to lose a cloak. His legs shook but he still made it over to her side and hefted her onto his shoulders. It was difficult but he managed to make it back. It took a while to where they had set up camp. As Naruto felt his consciousness slipping away, he could barely stay awake. He forced himself on though, placing her down. As he didn't want to lose conscious yet until he knew that she was okay at least. He noticed that Mishodo was gone but he didn't care. All he felt like he was going to do right now is pass out but he wanted to make sure that she was alright. Just as he was on the brink of falling unconscious, she stirred. She looked up at him with half open eyes. Sh shithead? Nurture released a soft chuckle as he smiled. For once it was good to hear that name. Tay then saw him lose his balance as he fall. Like a puppet that got his string cut. Time skip. Uh, five more minutes Tay Wai Chan. The floor felt so comfortable that. What the hell did you just call me? Naruto jumped up to his feet and moved back to avoid the fist that was about to punch him as he looked at her and she looked back at him. A hand reached up as he rubbed the back of his head. Sorry about that, Tewaya. Wasn't thinking straight. He smiled. She grunted and turned away in the half. As Naruto then smelled something, something kicked into his nose as he saw there was food over the fire. As he made his way over, Tewaya tried to ignore him as they eat. But as the time passed, her posture relaxed. This is really good, Tewaya, he said. She turned her head. He thought that she was mad as always, but he didn't see her cheeks becoming slightly red. Once again, the tension became so strange as their small campsite became awkward. As it became so awkward that the tension was so thick, you could cut it with a kunai. And that was exactly what Nurti did as he pulled out a kunai. Tell why I turned. What the hell are you doing shit that she asked. Nothing. Just practicing, he said. She shook her head. She was really going to teach him how to lie someday. Even she knew that shinobis had to be effective liars sometimes. She sighed and she stood up. It was late in her day, but she figured they could get some training in. She made a move to go off to one side of the clearing, but he stopped her. Wait, Tewaya. I think we should take a break from training today. We can make it to the border by morning if we walk from here. The Kayube was the one that told him that. She simply shrugged. She had went along with him for now. Why would she second guess or think about it now? They both packed up as they covered the fire, as they made their way, as they carried on for a while, both of them not really talking. She had gotten used to the darkness at night. She was not stumbling or slipping as usual. Even so, Naruto was aware of her position, making sure that she was following him, making sure that she wasn't getting hurt. Hey, shithead, she said, finally breaking the silence. Yeah, he said. What happened back there, she asked. As she noticed the hesitant tone of his voice when he answered, What, what do you mean? She narrowed her eyes. I mean with those two bastards back there. One second they were beating crap out of you and carrying me off. The next thing I knew, I heard some kind of wild animal growling. 
and then I'm unconscious. Nurta stop as she nearly bumped into him, but she turned at last moment only to trip over a vine, but she was caught right in his arms. He lowered her to the ground as he sat on as well. He had no idea how he was going to begin to explain all this to her. Despite all their time together, Nurta barely knew anything about his companion. She never opened up or talked about herself. It was probably a, well, give and take. He too never talked about his past. So, well, probably if he did. What do you know about the nine-tailed fox, he asked. She looked confused. What the hell's a fox got to do with this? Did a fox attack those guys? Well, sort of, but no. The nine-tailed fox was a demon. Nurta heard a cough in his head. Sorry. Ah, uh, Nurta paused. He didn't actually know what the Kaibu was himself. We were once known as Bijus. As Nurta heard the Kaibu words, it sounds strange. Her tone was a lot different. A Biju said Nurta. I didn't hear why I was confused. I do on the other side myself, but from what I know, the Nine Tail Fox was the most powerful of all of them. Seven years ago, the Fort Okagi. As he was focused on what he was saying, he didn't see Tewaya flinch a bit when he said that. Seal the Nine Tails into a baby to contain its power. Recovering from her shock, Tewaya returned back to her skull. She was thinking about what this fairy tale had to do with anything. As she heard of the Fort Okagi before, but then she placed it together, Naruto H, that animalistic growl, seal it into a baby. Her head shot up in shock. Yeah, I'm the kid that got sealed into Senruto. I'm the container of the Kayube. She stared for a while, searching his eyes for any sign of deceit. She knew that he was a terrible liar, and at the moment he was lying. She sighed, that meant she was traveling with a lunatic. Or, a container for an unholy, powerful demon spirit. So, you saved me. As Nurt looked at her, he was a bit, well, startled. He never expected a reaction, he thought that she would run away, or curse at him, like the villagers. Yeah, he said. Suddenly, she did something that he never actually thought she would ever do, as she moved forward and held him. Naruto didn't move a muscle, probably because he'd never been hugged before, or he didn't know what she might do if he moved. Finally, she released him and sat back, the darkness of the forest hiding her blush. Thank you. She wasn't naive like most, seven year old. She knew what would happen if she got taken away by those slavers. You were either forced into back breaking labor until the day you drop, or you would be used as some pervert, sick, pleasure toy until he got, well, not interested in more. As she shuddered at the thought, a hug was at least she could do to thank him for saving her from that fate. Naruto for his part was speechless. He didn't even think about anything like that when he was going to save her. It was just an instinct feeling. No, she was thanking him. Actually thanking him. No one had ever been grateful for anything he'd done before. As his hand moved up, what he usually did when he was nervous as he rubbed back of his head. It was nothing, he said. Tewai scooted over until she was right next to him. As she leaned in for another hug, wrapping her arms around him and placing her head on his shoulder. No, it wasn't. You saved me, she said. But no, she was curious. But just because you have this thing inside you, Nurta heard a huff in his head. How could you beat those guys? Nurta looked up at the stars. And then back and Tewai who was on his shoulder. Well, she gave me some of her chakras and Ruto. Tewai was a bit startled at that. She? As she sat up a bit straighter and looked at Naruto. Naruto spent the next half an hour explaining how he met the Kayube and what she taught him and everything. He left thought about the village and how he was treated, even if she noticed she didn't pry. After all, she had her own secrets to keep. She seemed interested in the power that Naruto used to save her. When she asked him to show it, he told her it was dangerous. Again, she didn't show it but her respect for him went up. When he was finished, he sat back, waiting for her, her judgement. Something he found rather nerve wracking Wait, so you've been getting extra lesson this entire time? He just looked at her. What, she said. Well, she was still T.Y. after all. Well, yeah, but it's in my head, so I don't know what I can do. But the Kayubi said when we get to the hidden sand, we can get our proper teacher that will give us jutsu and stuff. Well then come on, she said. We might as well get going. Naruto nodded as he felt like a weight had been lifted off his shoulder. Many hours later though, that weight returned. As Naruto saw nothing but sand. Pure, unending sand. Tell you why I was shocked as well as she gawked at the endless desert that seemed just spread out every direction. As they couldn't see a village or anything. We're supposed to spend the week in that? As Naruto was confused as well, although the table was staying rather quiet to his questioning. I guess so, but it's nearly sunrise, so we should probably get some sleep now. 
tell you why I didn't move, she just stared at the sand. How the hell are we gonna survive out there, shithead? We can't carry a week worth of water. Nurk rubbed back his head as he wondered how they were going to get food. As the Kayubi started to talk. Oh, okay. Tell you why I turned towards him. The Kayubi said that I should be able to smell out. Oasis. And there is desert animal that we can eat around there. She neared her eyes. Did the Kayubi also tell you how we're not going to freeze to death? As Nurk heard a growl in his head, aimed at Tewaya, for the mocking way she said the Kayubi's name. Yeah, apparently we're supposed to wear a load of our clothes all at once at night. Tewaya simply grunted. She wasn't sure why she was annoyed right now because that was a decent plan. She just went to set up their camp. She just wanted to get across the desert and be done with it. Maybe she didn't like sign or something. But her mood eased up by the time two of them were snuggling together for warmth. The fact that it got a lot colder the more they went near to the border. They noticed that instantly. She drifted off to sleep in his arms, while Nurt had his first lesson on desert survival from the Kayubi, as the Kayubi assured him that he was going to need it for a long time, if he planned to stay in the sand for a while. Time skipped. It was the middle of the week. They're tracked through the desert and Tewaya, and Nurt has been losing her patient. Tewaya has been losing it ever since Nurt saw her shivering one night and offered her his jacket. She had refused of course, she didn't want to look weak, but Nurt simply kept his arm extended with the jacket at the end of it for her to take it. She grumbled a lot before accepting it. If he was going to take it then she might as well have. Luckily she missed his smirk. She didn't realize it but he started to realize how she think now. She felt better after putting it on. But Nurta didn't come to expect any gratitude. Anything less than saving her life. Not that he mind of course. He was simply glad for the company. As he felt like he found a friend within her. Her no nonsense attitude. Well she take him for who he was. He could also see that she went through a lot through her life as well. So she could understand. He decided not to ask her about it, just waiting for her to feel right to tell him. Currently, they were in a cave, waiting for a sandstorm to pass. It just came, well, randomly, and quickly. Well, it lasted for about an hour, but the air was cold and chilly. Days, they had to stay in cave to keep the scorching sun off them. Nights were spent walking in the cold. They moved from oasis to oasis. Thankfully, the cave proved correct and Nurtu could sniff them out, but sometimes it was far off their path, but they had to go to get water. Naruto wasn't sure how the Kayubi knew where she was going, where everything seemed just stretch out, as he had seen nothing but sand. She just told him that he wouldn't understand when she asked him, that always irritated him, and she found it rather amusing. And also, even while he didn't understand a couple of the words that the Kayubi said, she was, well, implying something, especially when Tewaya was wrapped up in his arms, and he couldn't lock off the mental link, so her laughter was always there, and her mocking him and teasing him. How long do you think this crap sandstorm is gonna last if he wear? Nurta lifted his head too quickly as he banged his head on a low roof. As he rubbed his head, he wear started to laugh. I don't know, he said. Maybe another 30 minutes. Who can tell with these things? What I would give just for some rain. It never rained out here. The only reason why water was in the oasis because it was underground, protected from the hot sun. Oh please, this is nothing compared to the rock hill. But in the hidden stone, she quickly covered her mouth. As Nurta realized she just spoken about herself, as she never actually meant to make that slip, she made him know something about her past without needing to. So, you're from the earth country, he said. Yeah, so what? What's the big deal, she said. Nurta simply shrugged, as she saw that he wasn't really well primed into anything, as she found herself hard to stay mad at him at this, as she had to admit it felt good to talk about her past even if it was just a straight up information. What was it like? As she looked up at him, dry, Nurka smiled, as it was the first time he asked a question about her past and he answered truthfully. Drier than this? He asked as he looked around. She went quiet, so he decided to say something about himself. I never know what to think when imagining Leaf Village. She looked at him curiously. It was pretty a lot of the times at night you could see the stars, but the edge of the sky always had this orange tint. None of the houses ever looked the same. And there was so many variety in different streets. It was like you were walking in a different country every time you enter somewhere else. From the Hokage monument it would stretch on, for what I used to think was forever. He smiled as he thought about his time there. Some of the good time. She then spoke. In the winter, we would always get snow, she said. It would cover everything and make it seem clean and fresh. Then when it melted, the ground would go a funny shade of red. And the other children used to paint themselves, just like the pictures of the soldiers. Nurta's smile was softer now. He could tell that it was hard for her to just give out that piece of information. He knew that it would be pressing his luck to ask for more. So he didn't ask. I think the storm is lighting up. 
We should get ready to move on, he said. She just nodded slowly. It seems like her mind was elsewhere. As she went through the procedure of packing up the gear, Naruto was happy inside, perhaps. Now he could finally start to learn more about her. Another half an hour later, another sandstorm came. But there were no cave in sight. So, they had to walk through it. It threw off Naruto's smell of direction. So they had to rely on the Kayubi senses only. As they had to hold one another hand so they wouldn't lose each other as visibility was really low. Finally, Naruto saw as they made their way and crawl into a cave they were tired out. And their vision was blurry from the sand. As T.Y. was angry, the hidden sand. It had to be the goddamn hidden sand. You couldn't have chosen Kumo, could you? No, it had to be the one in the goddamn sand. As she was saying this, she was pouring sand out of her sandals. Well, it's near the sunrise and we, so we might as well have found shelter. She glared at him as he just backed away. She was in one of her moods, and nothing new to say right now is going to help him. But neither of them were tired yet, despite the walking that they have done. As the cave was rather silent, she looked towards him. Don't you dare go into your mind, she said. She said, You're not leaving me alone in here with this crappy noise. As the sandstorm was blowing outside wildly, and it sounded rather strange. As the both of them were hugging each other for warmth. As Naruto was planning on, well, going into his mindscape, but T.Y. wasn't tired, it seems. What do you want to talk about then? Who the hell said I want to talk? I just don't like being left alone. She turned her head and scowled. Why did it came out like that? She didn't really need him. She didn't like to be weak and soft. Well, she kinda actually need him for the warmth. Sometimes he was better than a blanket. She couldn't understand how he was so warm. When you talk about a village, she said, you seem to be happy, so why do you leave? She could feel him stiffen a bit. Also, you only talk about the place. What about the people? Tell you where I feel his body become a bit colder. It was like his emotions were tied to his body heat. There was an old man, the Hokage. He would come around every month to check on me, and we would talk for a while. Nothing specific. We would talk about food and how my studies are going. As his counter question came at a surprise. What about you? Was there anyone special in her country? She paled a bit, but he told her something, and now she felt like she owed him something in return. I had my grandfather, he wasn't much, and he would ignore me most of the time, but we had her a few good moments. When he was sober, she whispered. What about your parents? She turned around so quickly, her head looked like it was about to snap off, as she glared at him with fire in her eyes. What about yours, asshole? All the anger bled away from her features, as she saw an empty look in his eyes. I don't know. I never knew them. The old man told me they die died after I was born, but he never told me anything else. She blinked a few times. Y you're an orphan? Naruto nodded sadly. She was having difficulty believing him, as he acted so cheerful and nice. Yet everything he said about his life made his life sound so bad and worse. Me too, she said. They died when I was young as well. I don't even remember their faces. I was never told how or why they died, but it has something to do with the last war. Naruto didn't realize he was doing it, but he found himself hugging her a bit tighter. The sandstorm started to die down, but Naruto never said anything, as she was talking so she didn't seem to notice. So, what about your grandfather, said Naruto. Someone once told me that he was a great man. A powerful ninja that was feared in the second and third great Shinobi war, but he hated me. He said I remind him of a daughter he lost. He drank all the time and when he drank, he got angry. I had no friends to turn to, their parents, told them to stay away from me because of something my grandfather did during the war. As Naruto could understand this very well, everyone in my village hated me. The adults would beat or ignore me and the children whisper or throw stones in my direction. People would try to burn down my apartment or scratch things into the wall. They all believe I was the so-called demon that was seen inside me. I had no friends except for the Hokage. The orphanage kicked me out when I was four. They said I disrupted the other children. This time Tewa found herself hugging him closer. How do you do it? How do you stay so happy she asks. His shoulders slumped. I wasn't. I was never happy in that village. The day before I left I was about to kill myself. She gasped quietly. It was the Kayubi that saved me. We talked for a while and she convinced me to leave. To find somewhere I could live happily. And find some friends. As he smiled, she felt his body heat returning. And I met you. My first real friend. She was surprised the fact that he considered her a friend. Despite the way she treated him. The way she talked and acted. She didn't know whether to be happy or smack him for being so soft. She decided on both. 30 minutes after he left the cave, Naruto was still rubbing his cheek. But Tewa was smiling inside. As Naruto noticed something off in the distance, hey, I see something. 
She just groaned. He did this all the time. Announcing palm trees or strange bones he's out of his hand. Unless there's a sand or dongo stand. I don't give a crap, she said. As Naruto looked through the darkness, a big smile came on his face. Well, it isn't dongo, he said. Time skip. As he took in the sights, the sand really stuck out from the other flat plains. It was a inspiring sight. The mighty stone wall rose up. It was wide enough for about three men to walk side to side. The Kayubi told him that it was the only obvious entrance in and out of the village. After all, it was a hidden village. They have to have other entrances. There were also protective seals to stop any chakra based techniques like scaling the walls with their chakra. Not to mention ninjas were there to guard it. The entire sight from up close made the both of them go. They walked up as they saw the natural military prowess. As they started to approach ninja guarding the entrance, an average sized person with a veil. He looked rather bored. It seems like one of those people who has been stuck at this job for a while now. He narrowed his eyes as he saw the two children coming out of the desert itself. As he tried to find the adults that came here with him but he didn't see anything. He wondered if the heat was getting to him. But they were real. As he came up to him, his eyes focused on them solely. As he noticed they had packs like they had been on a long hike. He was about to ask them what their business was when a higher rank sensor name dropped down from above. He quickly sprinted towards the gate guard as Naruto and Tewa watched on. The new arrival glanced towards their position as he whispered to the guard. Once he was finished, he took one look at Naruto and vanished. The original guard coughed loudly as another whispered in his ear when he came by. As Naruto started to feel a bit anxious and even Tewa felt as well, she reached over and took his hand lightly. She probably not even realized she was doing it. After all, she wasn't a hand holding type. The newest guard quickly walked over, making a beeline towards them, slightly scaring them a bit. His whole head was wrapped up in bandages. Only his eyes and his nose were showing. I've been instructed to bring you straight to the Kazakagi. Please, follow me. He said nothing more as he turned and started to walk down the passageway. Stunned for a few moments, the man stopped as he turned to look back at them. The both of them started to walk slowly as they made their way after the man. Passing the giant outer wall, they came into the village proper. It was a beautiful sight, the buildings seemed to be rising onto the earth itself. A shade of brown, most of them. Balcony and windows warms. The place looked like a beautiful sight to behold. Means of advertising on the sands, on the shops, everything could be on full display. They make sure to stick to the close ninja that was making his way. Suddenly he stopped as Naruto had to pause as he almost bumped into the man. Another one appears, he started to talk to the man as well. As Naruto started to glance and look around, they seemed to be in some strange playground. A group of children were playing and running around, playing a game the ball that he didn't remember the name of. As Naruto saw one of them kick the ball and roll away to a kid that was on a set of swing. Naruto looked at him for a moment as the boy picked up the skate ball. He was small, obviously smaller than Naruto, but he looked to be the same age as he had right here. In his hand, he was clutching onto a stuffed animal. The child approached a larger group. As he held the ball out to the group, with a smile on his face, a small smile. The reaction that he got though wasn't what Naruto was expecting. The children, they seemed terrified, pointing and whispering amongst themselves. When he took another step forward, they took off, running in fear. The smaller boy extended his hand, but they were already gone. As he started to cry, it was like his cry activated the sand as sand move out and grab the feet of the boy that kicked the ball over to him. As Naruto was moving before he knew what was happening, as he arrived and blocked the stream of sand that was going to hit the boy in the floor, as his arms were crossed over his chest protectively. Small trickle of blood came down from the massive slam of sand that hit into him. The boy behind him got up and ran away. The red haired boy looked at Naruto as he accidentally dropped the beer to wipe his tears as he ran off. Naruto wasn't sure what to think. The boy controlled the sand to will, but it seems like he was confused and scared as well. Naruto slowly reached on and picked up the beer. He ran after the boy to get some answers. It was difficult seeing that the kid knew the sand better than him. But Naruto found him in the alleyway as he was crouched down. It was dark, but Naruto's eyes could see everything. As Naruto approached, the boy looked up. As he glanced towards him, Naruto held out the beer. The boy didn't move. As Naruto stepped closer, the red haired boy looked at him with shock, disbelief in eyes. He even rubbed his eyes to see if Naruto had vanished, if he was a hallucination. Why didn't you run like the others? Naruto smiled as the boy accepted the beer and clutched it to his chest. Naruto walked a bit closer and sat down opposite him, their eyes. The boy reached up and traced around the thick black lines that surrounded his eyes. My eyes? Naruto nodded. Our eyes are the same. The boy looked in Naruto's eyes, trying to find what the blonde meant. You, you have it too. The loneliness and the pain. Naruto nodded slowly. 
Why do they run from you? The, the sun, the boy said. But you tried to help them, giving them back the ball. Why did they run? As the boy seemed afraid, he was having a conversation with someone his own age. But if he told him the truth, he would run away from him. But Naruto feels some strange feeling. He didn't know what it was. I'm Naruto Uzumaki, he said. I'm Gara. Sabuk Nagara, he said. Naruto smiled brightly as Gara gave a small smile. Before they could say anything else, there was a swirl. The same guy from earlier and Tewai arrived. You. I told you to fall. The man paused as he looked at Gara. Gara. I didn't know you were here. I was giving orders to bring you to your father if I saw you, the man said. Gara nodded, but the smile that Naruto gave him was still there. As he came closer, the ninja made a hand sign and all of them disappeared. As Naruto never experienced the sunshine before, he would have fallen over because he felt so disoriented. But the older ninja grabbed him. He wasn't going to lose him again. As Naruto looked around, they were in some strange office with, well, luxurious things. There was a plain rectangular desk in the center though, as a man was behind it with shaggy, auburn hair, looked like Gara's. As he looked them over, Gara, wait outside. I'll speak with you later. His voice was calm, but there was an authority behind his words. Gara nodded as he walked through the room. His head hung low. The ninja who escorted them took that as an opportunity as he made his way towards the man. By no need to recognize this was a Katsukagi as he looked at the Katsukagi robes on the wall. Once he made his realization, his head bowed as he had run away from his charge earlier and he didn't want to make a, well, disturbance anymore. This was his first start and he wouldn't let anything ruin it. Tell you why I just looked across from him. She was confused by the odd behavior. She didn't have the benefit no Akagi personally and she didn't understand the situation she was in. The Kazakaya mouth twitched into a small smile, amused, but the small child bowed to him. That is not necessary, Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto raised his head. How, how do you know my name? I am the fourth Kazakagi. There's nothing in this village that I cannot find out. Seeing Naruto's slightly awe expression, he chuckled. Without any humor, though. If you must know, the ninja that escorted you here heard you say your name when you introduced yourself to my son. Oh yeah, said Naruto. As he rubbed back of his head that smile, the tension in the room now broken. The Kazakaki leaned forward as he looked at the boy. I am not one for small talk or long drawn out conversations. I had you brought here because one of my sensor names, the tech, a strange chakra signature that would either make you enemy ninjas that are transformed or under some strange genjutsu or one of you is a Jinjulki. He's talking about you kid, a Jinjulki is someone that has a biju within them. Naruto nodded in understanding as the Kazakage realized he was correct. Interesting, if I may ask, which tail beast do you contain? The Kayubi growled, as she didn't like to be called a tail beast. It's almost as bad as demon. You might as well tell him kid, he's leader of this place, and he will not hesitate to kill you if he deems it necessary. The nine tail fox, Kayubi, said Naruto. The Kazukage eyes widened. The man looked at Naruto for any deceit. The last I heard the Kayubi was under Konoha control. So why are you here? Naruto became nervous again, unsure. If telling the truth might bring him, well, good fortune or bad fortune. On the one hand, he didn't want to do anything to jeopardize his new life. But if people find out about his past, it might just repeat everything over again. I had to leave, he said. It was vague, but it was honest. The Kazakage had many questions. What is the relationship you share with the demon inside of you? You know of it, and it already seems like Konoha told you about it considering what happened to your village seven years ago. I assume that you had contact with the demon, yet you seem healthy enough. Does this mean you are in control of it? I wouldn't say that, said Naruto. We have more of a, as he searched for the right word, an understanding. It seems that this wasn't the answer the Katsukai was hoping for, but he nodded same way. My son Gar is like you, the Jinjulki of the one Tio Shigaku. Unlike you, his demon torment him, stop him from sleeping and if this carry on, I fear I will have to kill my son before he gets out of hand. As Naruto would have cried out in protest but the Kayubi told him to shush. I wish for you to help Gara control the demon within him, befriend him, train him if you can, beat him if you must, or can. But I wish for him to gain the same control you do. If that is not the case by this time next year, I will have to go through with my original plan. Again Naruto wanted to cry out but the Kayubi calmed him down quickly. You will live with us in the Kazakage mansion. There are plenty of spare rooms so that you're... He glanced towards Tewaya, who had stayed quiet through the entire thing. Companion can stay here as well. He gave one firm with his hand. The man that escorted them in here escorted them outside. 
Once they were outside, Naruto released a breath that he didn't even know that he was holding. As Tewaya looked at him, Naruto then turned his attention to Gaara, who was just standing there, clutching onto his bear, as he could see that shame and loneliness. Naruto made his way over to Gaara. Hi, Gaara, he said. The redhead was looking at the floor, but he looked up at Naruto. I think we're going to be friends now. Gaara blinked as he looked confused. Fr friends? Naruto nodded. Gaara never had a friend before. The escort then spoke, Gara, your father will see you now. As for you two, the man motioned for him to come closer, along with Tewe as they made their way. As Gara looked at Naruto with a small smile, Naruto nodded back, giving one of those beaming, big happy smiles that made Gara felt, well, different. It wasn't like the others. As he went inside the office, the man then vanished along with Tewe and Naruto. As Naruto collected himself as he looked around, he was somewhere different now. Kankuro, Temari. As Naruto heard rush of feet in their direction, a boy came around the door first. He looked to be a year older than Naruto or two, as he had brown hair, with a deep black shirt and black pants. After that a girl entered the room at a calm pace, she seemed older than the boy. Sandy blonde hair that was tied up in a long ponytail as she walked, as she had on a white shirt that seemed like a dress, it was tied up with a red sash. Yes, Baki Sensei? The older girl spoke as she glanced at two children next to him. The boy beside her was just staring at Naruto and Tewe, trying to figure out what was going on. I am only here to inform you that these two will be staying here for a while. Temari, the Kazakagi has instructed you to show them around, before letting them retire to the room, closest to Gaara's. Temari nodded. Why? said Kankuro. Because Kankuro, your father, has ordered it. Kankuro nodded as Baki stepped back as he glanced towards the four children now. A tired sigh escaped his lips as he vanished. As Naruto and Tewe turned back towards the other two, so, say Temari, as it was silent and kind of awkward. Hi, said Naruto, and Naruto Uzumaki, and this, as he motioned towards Tewaya, as she had yet to say a word since entering the Kazakaga office. It's Tewaya, he said. The tension broke, as Temari nodded, as Kankuro was glaring at the both of them. So, Naruto, might explain why we're going to be living together for the foreseeable future. As Temari showed them around, as Naruto told them what happened, he saw the look of on ease around their face when he mentioned he was a Jinjolke, but they said nothing about it. Once she was done showing them around, she brought them to a large corridor as she opened the door next to Gaara's, a room for Naruto while Tewai was right across from his. Temaru was upbeat like himself and nice. Kankuro was rather distrust of people and he was protective of his brother and people his age group didn't like his brother and he tend to hate them as well. So he didn't know about Naruto and Tewai for now so he had his suspicions. But once he heard the story about how Naruto met Gaara, he realized probably he was a nice guy. But he still didn't fully trust him yet. The tour ended there as Temar escorted a nervous looking Tewai to her own room. Conqueror stayed behind as he had a puppet in his hand that he was tinkering with. If you're living here, I expect that father will have you train as a shinobi. Naruto was a little shocked. Apart from his outburst in front of Baki, this was the first thing that he said to him. If I know my father, he won't waste any time. Get a good night's sleep to get ready to get up early tomorrow. He started to walk away because he said over his shoulder, it's the last chance he'll get for a few years. Naruto could practically feel the smirk coming from him as he left. Turning, Naruto looked over the room. This one room alone was the size of his apartment back in Kanoha and that didn't count the bathroom. A large bed with beige sheet and darker pillows and a giant window that gave him a breathtaking view of the hidden sand. After looking at the place that he was going to be gone home for now, he looked on the place with a warm smile. As he ran and leaped, as he bounced on the bed, as it felt so comfy, as he landed in a heap, snuggling up to a pillow that guarded his bear. So what do you think, Ayubi? He said. I think that I was right, she said. I was right to tell to leave the village, don't you think? She asked. Yeah, I guess you were, but I was actually talking about Gara. Do you think we can help him? The Jinjulki of Shikaku. So disdainful, said the Kayube. As Naruto would sense the hostility that she had. My answer is yes though, we should be able to help him. I'll slap some sense into that Tanuki. Just don't expect results at the same time. Because it might take a while. Honestly, she said, I think I should have done something about his bloodlust before now. Father would be so ashamed. Before Naruto had time to question her, his door opened up. He smiles, he stood up. Tay while I walked over, she climbed under the covers with him. He looked at her questioningly. It's cold in this house, she said. She would not admit that she was, well, used to his presence being there when she slept. 
Not to mention this whole experience left her feeling vulnerable and weak. And he was the only thing that she had to hold on to right now. Nurta said nothing and just wrapped his arm on her waist. She was used to it by now as she said nothing. What have you gotten us into? She yawned. Shake head she said. As she said it, she leaned in closer on his chest. As she was out like a light. Nurta smiled as he was equally tired. As a soft bed lulled him to sleep. As he was looking towards a new future. Him being a part of it in the sand. As he wondered what the future had to hold for him. Time skip. Gar walked into the large room. As he saw Nurta sitting on bed cross-legged, he was running a file across his fingernails. Well, it would be justice to call them that. They looked more like claws. As Nurta was smirking as he rubbed the file across it quickly, a small amount of dust was gathered. Nurta smiled as he blew dust away. Only the frown. It wasn't the claws that gone down. It was a file that was dig into. Why do you even bother anymore? Nurta looked up. He was so in rap, even his advanced senses as Miss Gara came into the room. After all, they were so close. His sense was always around. As Nurt looked at one of his closest friends. Yes, they have become good friends. Since the seven years of him being here. Seven years has done a lot for Gara. He was no longer shy and small. He had grown into a confident and intelligent teenager. He had on simple shinobi pants with a black fishnet shirt underneath his black shirt. As the fishnet shirt just came out a bit past the short sleeve of the shirt that he was wearing. Over the top he had on a white sash that went over his shoulder. That also acted for the holder for his gourd on his back. They had tried many times to find a way to carry around that sand that Gara carry, but they failed. So he instead decided to use this, the gourd. It was only a plus that the gourd was made from sand same way. They get in the way, said Naruto as he shrugged. As he slid from bed and made his way towards Gara. As Naruto stand a few inches above Gara. Yes, he has grown, seeing that his growth was no longer be stunned by the diet that he was, or the not existing food that he was eating when he was younger. His spiky blonde hair tried to fall past his furry protector, but it just produced two long bangs that came down inside his face. He had on black shinobi pants and black sandals. He had on a dark orange t-shirt with a dark green jacket that was unzipped when he wasn't on missions. And his eyes were slitted, fang-like canines, and also his claws. Would you like me to create a file for you? Nurta simply shrugged. He had no real problem with the additional forms that Kayubi seemed to enjoy so much. It was just he got in the way of a few things that frustrate him daily. Nah, I'll just stick to the normal one. As he placed hand into a seal and child chakra until there was a small poof. When it clear, Naruto stood there. But his animalistic traits were no longer there. Kayubi had made true to a word to make sure the transformation technique was the first that Naruto learned. So I guess you're here because Baki Sensei wanted to see us about something. Gara nodded. The two might have been best friends. But Gara still wasn't the talkative type that much. As they both walked out, as they came into Tewai who was coming out of her own room, Nurta thought that in a sarcastic tone because since the past seven years, she has been sneaking out to sleep with him. It wasn't that he minded, quite the contrary, he didn't mind at all, but the entire household now knew and there was always a charade about it. It was Tewai pride that stopped her from just moving in, her stubborn pride. Like the two young boys, she has also changed in the past seven years. She stood under Nurta just a bit in height with a slimmer build. Her hair was longer, no reaching out into her lower back, no showing a nice shape, with a headband blocking hair from falling to her eyes, just a few strands going down between her nose. Black snowy pants but cut to a feminine figure, and a white shirt that was cut at her mid stomach. It exposed her stomach, well it would have, but she had wrapping around her stomach. But those did nothing to hide her chest that was starting to show. She has complained a lot when they first start to show. Seeing that they were just a nuisance to her training as they were always getting away. But one day after a talk with Temari that left her quite red, she stopped complaining. Naruto was happy, it made no difference to him how she looked. But despite him saying that to be a good thing, she shot him an evil look. As he wondered how did they felt. What? He quickly banished that thought. Where did that came from? The three nodded, no words need to be said as they made their way through the complex of the hallway. It was second nature to all of them by now, they knew everything about this place. Eventually they reached a room where Baki would meet them for major updates or training. But strangely he wasn't there yet, that was unusual. Seeing that he was always on time. Naruto sighed loudly. What kind of inconsiderate sensei was late anyway? A few hundred miles away, a mass ninja sneezed as he was hopping from tree to tree. The unexpected sneeze caught to slip as he hit right into a tree. As he sat on the ground rubbing his sore head, wondering where that sneeze came from. Naruto shrugged this was Baki sensei for his offense. 
As he made his way towards the window and sit down, as he pulled out his small, little orange book, ever since he found the Land of Fire Abyss number one selling series, he just loved it. It wasn't actually the smut that he was interested in, it was the story. He also connected to the main character of the series that was also called Naruto. His determination, his drive and his spirit. But know that he was, well, in puberty. The other parts of the books, like the sexual talks were, start taking his notice. Gar on the other hand rolled his eyes. Must you keep reading that? Naruto simply paid him no mind as he kept on reading. Tay on the other hand, march over. What the hell have I told you about reading that, Naruto? Angrily, she snatched it out of his hand and stepped back. But Tay she reached behind her into the leather pouch behind her. Saying that Naruto withdrew. I told you not to read the book, she said. I haven't reached his volume, and I don't want any spoilers, she said. Naruto simply nodded. He wasn't the only one that liked the books. Gara's sign rolled his eyes, as he wished her sensei would show up, so he wouldn't have to deal with his perverted teammates. Lucky for him, as Baki entered the room, it seems that the man had some news. But guys, if you end up so right here, if you want to next part, be certain to do. Like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification to stay posted. But I'm off for now. See you guys soon. Peace.